preamps. Is a portable battery operated preamp like this really worth the trouble? The Saramonic SRPAX2 is a great looking unit with an all metal enclosure and it certainly stands out being red in colour. It's a two channel active audio mixer with 20 dB gain and three levels of phantom power. It's designed to be attached to and used specifically with video cameras in order to reduce noise levels. It has a frequency response of 20 Hz to 20 kHz. Quoted signal to noise ratio is minus 80 dB. The line input has 0 dB gain and the mic input has 20 dB gain. Input 1 offers 5 and 3 volt phantom power via a switch on the front panel which goes to the 3.5mm sockets. Input 2 provides 48 volts phantom power to the XLR sockets. You can also switch phantom power off completely for dynamic mics. It can be mounted onto a tripod via two different sized screw threads on the base. One is 3 8 inch and the other is quarter inch. It can also be screwed into the base of your camera at the same time, so in effect it becomes part of the camera itself, allowing you to adjust audio levels externally without having to go into the camera's menu settings. The top is rubberized so that you don't scratch the base of your camera when you attach it. It's powered by one 9 volt battery. Quoted use times are 5 hours without phantom power and 3 hours with, so it might be a good idea to use rechargeable batteries. In fact, Saramonic recommend the use of lithium-ion batteries for longer working times. To insert a battery, it has a neat little drawer mechanism which shows which way round to point the pins of the battery. That means you can't fit it the wrong way round without seeing that it's wrong. The phantom power supply is set via switches on the front panel, so before connecting anything, it might be a good idea to check those switches to make sure that you are supplying the correct amount of voltage to your mic inputs. This preamp is really useful in that it accepts signals from a wide variety of mic sources such as balanced XLR microphones, 3.5 mono and stereo microphone jack plugs and also external audio mixers. You can attach two microphones at the same time and assign each to the left and right or assign both to a mono track via the stereo mono switch. The only inputs it doesn't accept are 6.5mm jacks and phono plugs from other sources, so adapters would be needed. The gain is set by the two control knobs on the front, where there is also a meter, which is lit to make sure that you're not setting the gain too high on the input side. Sound can be monitored directly by the headphone out socket, although it is a little bit hissy in use, so personally I prefer to monitor from the recorder or the camera. There's even a cold shoe on the side if you want to, you can mount a microphone there rather than on the camera and plug it into the preamp. A short patch cable is supplied in order to allow you to connect the audio out to your camera. So in order to help lower the noise floor, you should set the camera audio to a low level and use the Saramonic to set the gain overall. One thing that you need to look out for is that phantom power is the first thing to drop out when the battery starts to sag. However, you can still drive microphones that don't need phantom power with that same battery, making you think that perhaps something might be wrong with the unit, when in fact all you need is a fresh battery. It looks like I'll be keeping two types of battery, one with plenty of voltage left for phantom power and lower voltage ones for dynamics. Battery levels are displayed on the front panel, so it's a good idea to keep an eye on that. To connect your microphone and set the gains is dead easy. You basically plug the microphone into whichever socket suits at the back here, or, the, or you can have it as the front if you like, it doesn't matter which way around you have it. And you basically just play around with the gains on the front here and watch the level meter while you're speaking. So it's dead easy to set up, gives you a really clear indication but then once you've got that set you mustn't forget to make sure that whatever you're recording into whether it's a camera or a recorder uh, you must make sure that the gain's set correctly on your camera as well because otherwise you're going to get distortion or too soft levels at that end so at the moment I'm using a dynamic microphone into this and it just about has enough gain to drive this 
This is the sound of the Saramonic driving the AKG D5 microphone. Now, being a dynamic, this takes quite a lot to drive it, and the Saramonic is virtually at the top of its range. If I turn it totally to its top, it sounds like this, which is possibly, oh, hang on, sorry, which is possibly a little bit too loud, but just to test for noise levels, this is full whack. And back down again. So it does drive a dynamic, just about. This is the sound of the Saramonic driving a condenser microphone. This one is an Audio-Technica AT2020, and um, I've had to adjust the gains on the preamp, set them a bit lower, and uh, left the camera as is, because the gain obviously going to the camera is going to be the same once you've set it here at this end. And this is the sound of a condenser using 48 volt phantom power. There's just one thing about this 48 volt phantom power and the three volt and five volts. Um, there is no indicator light on the preamp to tell you whether the uh, phantom power is on. So um, you've got to be a bit careful with that because you're not always sure whether it's sending volts out to your, uh, your microphone or not. And um, it has to be checked all the time. And the switches are marked they're quite small, so you've got to really check everything before you start to record. This little furry ball that I'm talking into is a Rode Video Micro, which is a tiny microphone and requires 5 volts power to get it going. And so you go into input 1, and I've gone into the stereo plug this time and uh, adjusted the gains. And this is the sound of the Video Mic Crow. I always get them confused with the Video Mic Go, the Video Mic, the Video Mic Pro. This is the Video Micro, the Video Micro, and sounds like this when driven by this preamp. The Saramonic SRPAX2 retails at around £130. The idea of using one of these devices is to help get the noise floor as low as possible by lowering the camera gain and using the Saramonic preamp instead to raise the input gain. So, depending on whether you find the sound of your camera noisy or not, might possibly help you decide whether this is worth the cost. It's also really handy to be able to set levels without delving into camera menus. I would prefer not to carry this around portable myself though, since ambient noise normally wouldn't enable you to hear the mic self noise easily, and it's a fairly bulky unit to be carrying around for run and gun shooting but I can see uses for it at home where surrounding noise levels are much lower and hiss might be more of a problem. So personally, I see it more as a semi-portable device. Mounted on a tripod, it works well because the camera and preamp are linked together as one unit, unlike the cheap but excellent SmartRig Plus preamps which only have a Velcro strap to hold them. This unit has these mounting screws to connect everything together securely. This means that the control of audio levels is right there at your fingertips underneath the camera. I really like the metal casework and the build quality of the Saramonic, although for portable use, as I said earlier, it's a little bit large in comparison to some of the other devices that are out there. However, this one is a bit cheaper than many others, and so is great value for money, especially with its wide selection of inputs. It's especially useful if your camera has a noisy preamp, since hiss levels from the Saramonic do seem to be quite low, even at higher volumes. It does have 20 dB gain, but it would be nice to have a little more for some dynamic microphones. Then again, we're all probably always looking for that extra bit of gain and sensitivity as far as most microphones go. It takes a very wide variety of inputs and provides three levels of phantom power. So this is very useful if you have a wide selection of microphones to choose from, making it a very versatile device and pretty invisible sonically in use, since I've been using it to power my microphones all of the way through this overview. This is the sound of the Saramonic. This is the sound of the Saramonic driving an Audio-Technica. Just touched it. Phone. 